took our place and he died for us amen let us pray heavenly father we thank you so much this evening what a privilege what an honor what a joy to be here as we enter into your word we pray for the gift of your holy spirit take charge take control of this atmosphere speak to us concerning your word in jesus name amen right so this evening i want to continue from um where we started yesterday uh, mark chapter 16 from verse number 21 Matthew 16 from 21 from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savoreth not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Amen. Yesterday I began by sharing with us steps to following Christ. And God outlines it right here, or Christ outlines it right here in verse 24. That these are the qualifications that you need in order to follow me. Number one, you must deny yourself. Because some of us, we love ourselves too much. Yeah, you love yourself. You love your sleep. You love your um, whatever too much. You love yourself. You cannot be a disciple of Christ. You cannot be a follower of Christ. Who is a Christian? A Christian is a follower of Christ. You cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a good Christian if you cannot deny yourself. Yeah, you cannot deny your sleep. You cannot deny your luxury. You cannot deny the nice things that you have. Amen. All right. And then take up your cross. You see, all along, many of us, we have been carrying the cross of Jesus. Isn't it? Yeah, because it's easy. He's carried it already. Do you get it? And he's done it already. So it's just easy to pick it up and continue. But God is saying here that I have carried my... Jesus is saying, I have carried my cross. It's done. You also... There is a cross that you must carry. It didn't say, take up the cross of Christ. It says, if any man wants to come, deny himself, take up his cross, your cross, and then follow me. All right, so everybody here, there is a cross that you must carry. God has specifically designed a cross for everybody. Amen. It has your name on it. And everybody's cross is different. Hallelujah. All right, so to follow Christ, you must deny yourself, you must take up your cross, and you must do what? Follow Jesus. Next verse. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. All right. So yesterday, one of the things that, the questions that we were asking ourselves, which I want you to still continue to ask, is that since you became a Christian or a follower of God, what have you suffered for Christ? Amen. To take up your cross and to follow Jesus means to suffer. That's why I showed you that video. Amen. Yeah, to take up your cross is not a luxurious life. Yeah, number one, the cross itself is heavy, isn't it? Yeah, and the cross represents pain. It represents suffering. It represents loss. Since you became a Christian, what have you suffered for Christ? Since you became a Christian, what have you lost for Christ? Since you became a Christian, what have you sacrificed for Christ? For you, Christianity has just been a road of roses. Every time the church is close to your house, you've never driven X amount of miles to church before. 
Yeah. If the church is too far, you will not go. No sacrifice. You've never come on any morning prayer line because your sleep is too important. You can't wake up. You've never come for midweek. You've never done anything. So your whole Christian life is just convenience. Amen. But that is not a proper type of Christian. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is saying to follow me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross. And I'm saying the cross, again, Christianity is the only religion that has been commercialized. So you see people wearing blink, blink, cross, chain, yeah. So you, when we ask you, say, Pastor, this is my cross that I'm carrying. Yeah. Some of you even wear it on your ears, on your toes, <laughs> toe rings and whatever. Amen. But that is not the cross that we are asking you to carry. What have you suffered because of Christ? Amen. Yeah. That's why even look, Easter weekend, after sending so many messages and whatever, still look around. The church is just filled with saved people. Where are the parents? They cannot be bothered. Yeah, it's too nice. It's a weekend. I'm going for a party here. I'm going for get together. I'm too tired. Do you get it? It's been a stressful week. Saturday, let me just rest. Yeah, convenient life. You can't give up anything for God. Yeah, are you not ashamed that your children are here and you are not here? Yeah, yesterday I made a declaration. I said, many of us, our Christian life is a disgrace. Yeah, and I have no shame. Your, dis- your Christian life is a disgrace. You should be ashamed to call yourself a Christian. Say, I, I am trying to become a Christian. Yeah, you are, you are here and your, you are, your children are here. You are not here. And you are sleeping or you are doing something. Yeah. What have you sacrificed for God? You cannot even take off to come to church. It's a sacrifice to take off, to be able to say, look, I'm taking off. No, rather you have signed up <laughs> for double. Yeah. Amen. And you wonder why they don't respect Christianity. It's because of you, your behavior. You say you're a Christian, but we all know <laughs> the things you do at work. How you live, your talk, everything. That's why they don't respect your religion. Amen. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, you, when you see a Muslim, don't you respect him? Yeah, you respect him. You can see that he's living the life. But a Christian, no, 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 no. We have watered down Christianity. Amen. So you ask yourself, what have I suffered because of Christ? What have I given up because of Christ? Amen. What do you think? Yeah. Deny yourself. Some of you, your ambition, so ambitious. You want to go to school here, do this, work here, do that, live in a certain whatever. All of that is costing you your Christianity. Amen. Yeah, going higher. It's so amazing. And everybody wants to go higher in the world. It's only in Christianity, people rather even want to go lower. Isn't it? Yeah, at your workplace. You see, every store, grocery store, all the cashiers aspire to be managers and supervisors and go higher and higher and higher. But in church, when you are trying to promote people, no, no, it's like rather, you get it, even these two times a week that I'm coming, I'm thinking about cutting it down. (laughs) Amen. Yeah. Christianity is like some part-time, your part-time job. See, anybody who has a part-time job, part-time means it's like you're not serious. It's like, it's, it's just something to get by. That's why your part-time job, when you call off and call off, they are not so angry as your full-time job. You know, they, they, they understand that, look, it's just something part-time, just something to time, <laughs> pass time by. <laughs> you see, yeah, they know that it's just something to supplement something. Amen. All right, but don't treat Christianity like that. Hallelujah. All right, so God is asking us today, what have you suffered? For his sake. What have you given up for his sake? Amen. What have you had to go through for his sake? What pain have you had to go through for his sake? Yeah. Look, if you want a perfect life, luxurious life, whatever, you cannot be a good disciple. Yeah. And many people came to Jesus in his time. One day a rich man came. He said, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. So the guy went away very sorrowful. Another time, somebody came, he said, look, if you want to follow me, you must hate your mother, your father, your your children, yeah. When we, and that, when you say hate, 
it doesn't mean go and develop a hate for them. But what it means is that when we see you, we must ask, hey, are you not married? Don't you have children? That's what we mean. When we see the way you are involved, we should ask, hey, we should be worried about your children. Yeah, but you, when we see you, we are not worried. Yeah, because you have everything going. But you see, you don't know what is about to happen to you. That is what I'm going to preach to you tonight. Amen. What do you think? All right, so let us renew our minds about Christianity. Yes, there's a lot of blessing involved. Yes, there's a lot of riches and whatever, breakthrough, all the things. It comes with Christianity. Do you see? But there is also suffering. Philippians 1, 29. Are you still here? Philippians 1, 29. It says, for unto you is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe. Many of us believe, don't we? That's why you are here. You believe in Christ. You believe in the cross. You believe in heaven and hell and all these things, isn't it? So good. You've passed the first one. But it says, but also to suffer for his sake. To suffer for his sake. Amen. So you've not only been called to believe in Christ, but you've been called to suffer for the sake of Christ also. That's why I'm asking you, what have you suffered since you became a Christian? What have you suffered since you believed? Amen. We must, part of your resume in Christianity must include some suffering. Amen. Suffering. For some of you, it means you need to change your job. You need to get a pay cut. You need to do whatever. You need to lose some sleep. You get it? You will lose some time, family time, whatever. Amen. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I was telling them the other day, I don't remember the last time I had family time. I don't even have time for my children. Every day, up and down, up and down, up and down. The small time we have, I'm tired. So I tell them, look, we're going to go out. Everybody, let's sleep. That's my trick. It's like, look, we're going to go out. So everybody, let's sleep when we wake up. By the time we wake up, it's night. I say, oh, see, we can't go out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I myself, more than two years ago, I've bought a bicycle for my. We've never taken it out before. <laughs> I went to buy it myself. But now the time <laughs> to go outside and ride. There's no time. It's still in my garage. Amen. And then last year, I went to buy scooters also. Just piling up. <laughs> Amen. All right. But what have you suffered? What have you sacrificed? What have you given up for God? Are you here or are you going home? All right. Tell your neighbor, I'm sacrificing something from today. All right. So, your coming to church and your regular Christian life is just basic. Do you understand? It's just basic. Don't pat yourself on the back when you are doing these things. God expects you to do more. And I was showing you that even in the life of Jesus, remember when he was born, the Bible says as his custom was, even as a young child, he would go to church every day. Yeah, it was nothing. Going to church is nothing. Do you see? Going to church is nothing. Then as he grew and grew and grew, then he started preaching, teaching and healing, isn't it? Then he did that for about three and a half years. Then after that, he took his Christianity to the next level which was the cross. Okay, so there were three phases in Jesus' Christian life. The regular Christian life. Then he stepped up a bit to become a preacher and a teacher. Then he stepped up sacrificing. Amen. Some of us, we are still at stage number one. After so many years of being a Christian, you are still doing this coming and going on Sunday. That's it. You are not a shepherd. You don't do anything in the church. You don't contribute. You don't do anything. You are even still struggling with tithe <laughs> and giving offering and all these things. You know, somebody was doing a calculation, and he was saying that when you give your tithe, he calculated, okay? And the calculation was that when you give your tithe, assuming you work eight hours a day, okay, eight hours a day, when you give your tithe, it means you've only given... 48 minutes of your time to God. So out of the 8 hours that God has blessed you with strength to go and work, when you pay your tithe of 10%, it's like giving God 48 minutes. Isn't that your break time? Yeah. 
your break time plus maybe extra three minutes because usually break time is 30 minutes then you get some 15 minutes additional break so extra three minutes you've given god yeah you see how small it is yeah. when you calculate it that way it's very small so don't be so happy when you are given your tithe and you think wow it's too much it's not too much you can just watch the video you see what christ did for you yeah and you are saying it's too much to give him 48 minutes of your time to give him 10 percent you must be very ungrateful amen all right so this evening for the next five minutes i just want to share with you responding appropriately to god's love amen all right from the video we saw we've seen how and what god had to go through or what christ went through just for you and i amen the pain the suffering the agony the disgrace all the things he went through just because of you and i and bible says that it was out of love for god so loved the world god did it because of love for us but now the question is now that somebody has shown you love hmm, what is your appropriate response to that love that has been shown you amen you know the other day i was watching um i think on the news some guy who has been on the kidney transplant list for a long time and finally it was getting worse and worse and worse he was about to die and then finally breakthrough he got somebody and whatever and they went through the surgery and when he came back oh yeah he wants to meet the person was so grateful this that and telling the person look i owe my life to you and this and telling the person you know you i have a part of you in me because like the person's kidneys i have a part of you we are we are now related this is somebody responding appropriately to the love that has been shown him by the one who donated do you see by you what are, what are you doing to the love that God has shown you? Yeah. Do you get it? You are rather annoyed <laughs> by it. Yeah, and some of you, even your pride is like, well, I didn't ask him to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask him to do it. But since he's done it, I mean, I'll take it anyway. But I didn't ask him to do it. Yeah. How do we know? Spoken without words. You don't need to say many things you don't need to say. Let me just look at you. Amen. I mean, can't you just look at people and you can tell something? Yeah. So you to by your attitude, by your response to the things of God, we can see that you are not appreciative of the love that has been shown you. Hallelujah. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, this is the behavior of a lot of women in a relationship especially in marriage they understand yeah look there are always more women in the world than men do you know that yeah so when a guy has seen you and chosen you and said i'll marry you you should be grateful go and ask the people who are not married they will tell you <laughs> how they are longing to be chosen <laughs> no it sounds like a joke but if they'll really tell you the truth yeah but you see some people, it's like, uh, uh, they, 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 he would have married me anyway, or a lot of people were in line. Why didn't they? <laughs> Don't bring yourself. A lot of people, well, I mean, the way I'm beautiful, everybody would have married me. Really? <laughs> Why didn't they then? Yeah, with all your beauty and whatever, this one came, he touched your breast, he didn't marry you. This one kissed you, he didn't marry you. This one blew you, he didn't marry you. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. Why, Why didn't they? <laughs> oh, why didn't you tell me there are children here? What a shock. <laughs> children, you are warned. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So when somebody has chosen you and said, I will marry you and put his name, it's in, it's, it's in the Bible. It says, Time will come. Some women will go to some men and say, You, we are not concerned about sex, cooking, just marry so that we can have a ring and wedding picture and then certificate that's all don't even come to the house just so that everybody can see that we two have married it's in the bible amen so when you are chosen even you you when you go to the store common milk you are buying don't you choose which one yeah there are a lot of them the same but you choose you don't want the first one you don't want the second one you say no i don't want it you put it back i want this yeah 
you choose. So God also has a choice. Amen. Everybody has a choice. You see, so when you've been chosen, you see what is your appropriate response uh, yeah, to you being chosen. You see how you behave in the house, the way you talk, the way you respond. It's a sign that you don't appreciate you being chosen. Amen. We should have left you by the roadside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still here or are you going home? All the ladies in this church know I love them. So what do you think? Oh, it's only your friend who will tell you the truth. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. It is only your friend who will tell you, isn't it? It is your enemy that when you are not looking nice, you say you are looking nice. Because he wants you to go outside and be a, an object of mockery, isn't it? Yeah. When he doesn't like you, he say, oh, you look very powerful. But meanwhile, you don't. Hallelujah. Anyway, let's move on. So responding appropriately to God's love. And I want us to look at two significant people. Number one is our own friend Peter and his second cousin Judas. <laughs> Amen. Let's go back to Matthew chapter what? 16. From verse... 25, 26, where did Peter say, where did Peter take him aside? Are you still here? Are you enjoying yourself already? All right, so I want you to leave here with that question. It's the question for the weekend. What have I suffered since I became a Christian? Amen. I want you to ask yourself and answer it. What have I suffered? What have I gone through? What have I sacrificed? Amen since I became a Christian. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Then he turned and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savoureth not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Be careful of those people who discourage you and speak against your losing your suffering and your sacrificing. You know, all of us, there are some people in your life, as soon as you begin to, especially in regards to church, as soon as you begin to speak of your sacrificing, I have to go for this choir rehearsal, we'll come late. Then they begin to speak against it. Mm, hey, why? Yeah, comments like that. Why? Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Amen. Beware of such people. From this verse, we can see that many a time they are speaking under the influence of Satan. Peter came and he said something to Jesus. And Jesus' response was, get thee behind me, Satan. It is the voice of Satan that opposes the sacrifice. Find me that verse that said, it's the devil is the one who, um, whatever, opposes the daily sacrifice. Yeah, it is the voice of the devil. The devil, Satan, they didn't have any problem with Jesus preaching and teaching and healing people and delivering people. But he had a problem when he was going to the cross. Amen. He never tried to kill Jesus when he was trying to heal people, preach, and turning what, five loaves, feeding. Did you see Satan appear there? He never had a problem with that. But when it came to suffering, sacrifice, and dying, that he had a problem.